So building doors and windows in Australia, I never really had to think too much about insulation or thermal bridging or anything like that. Then I moved to Canada. <laughs> well, yeah, I had to start thinking about it a lot. Nowadays, whenever I'm building a, a door, I'm always thinking about just how I can incorporate more insulation or better insulation and think more about how I'm going to deal with uh, the movement of the wood. With something like an entrance door, not only do we have to think about that movement just through, you know, seasonal uh, differences in temperature and humidity levels in the air, but also uh, obviously the fact that, you know, we have these drastic differences between the outside temperature and humidity levels to what we have inside. So whenever I build um, an entrance door, I'm always looking at uh, the best way I can incorporate insulation to not only um, reduce that thermal bridging and, and therefore heat loss through the, through the door, but also to allow for the, the movement of materials, which I think is, is greatly exaggerated when you've got, you know, bigger differences in temperature from inside to out. And obviously the same goes with, with humidity levels. You know, a lot of our homes now, uh, we actually are able to, to control the humidity levels inside. So that, that can, that can really create havoc on, on doors and windows if they would. Hence this video today. I want to, this is a, a new way of me going about a raised panel door. These concepts have been around for a long, long time. Um, I'm just trying to apply it to this particular job and show you what I'm doing. And hopefully if there's anyone out there, because I'm only at this point, <laughs> stage of the job, if I'm doing something drastically wrong that you can see, hey, that's going to fail in 10 years time or 20 years time, you know, leave a comment and let me know. So what I've done is actually uh, split the panels in two. Oh, I made two separate panels, I guess, more to the point, um, which I'm actually going to, you know, have in place or keep in place just like I would with a, a five piece cabinet door. So that basically keeps, will keep it, keep it centered within the, the door frame. I then cut resawn from some one inch rigid insulation these three sixteenths thick pieces of foam that then basically go between the two panels. So it's not a huge amount of insulation, no, but it, it, a, it, it definitely uh, stops some of that thermal bridging way, way better than just the wood, obviously. Um, this is the inside of the door, so the inside panel goes in again with the with the panel barrels to keep it central, and then the uh, beading will go on to that'll get pinned in and hold the panel in place. So now, essentially, what I've done, and these panels will all get finished inside and out on both sides. So it, it certainly slows down that movement of wood compared to if they were raw. Um, and really, really important to, to, to finish both sides of the, of the panels evenly, because if you don't finish one side and only finish the inside, then, then obviously that, that opposite side, the side that's not finished, is going to absorb moisture much uh, easier than the side with the finish on it. So really important, finish both sides. Anyway, so they finish both sides 
and then both are floating independently. So essentially the inside one, which will likely not be subjected to, to the amount of movement that the outside one uh, will, can move independently of the outside one. You know, while this is a little bit of a test for me, it's a slight tweak on what I would normally do, all very much the same principles, and these principles have been around forever. It's just we've got different materials these days than what we had 100 years ago or more. Um, but if, uh, you know, I mean, I'm just at the stage of assembling this, so if you see this video and you see something glaringly wrong that I'm, you know, that, that you can see like in 10 or 20 years this door is going to fall apart or whatever, you know, drop a comment in the section below and let me know because it's not too late to, to change it. But I think this will, I think this will work. Um, and yeah, I just thought I'd uh, put that out there and, and uh, see what you thought. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you like this sort of content and you'd like to see more, please remember to, to uh, subscribe and, and uh, so you don't miss any more videos as they come along. I hope this is helpful for anyone thinking of building themselves a, a, uh, an entrance door or something. Certainly in, in climates like here in Canada, try to think about uh, wood movement and, uh, and the differences uh, in temperature between inside and out. Humidity levels as well, obviously, uh, play a huge, huge role. So, you know, allowing things to move rather than trying to lock it in uh, because you try and lock it in and it's not going to work. It, it will, trust me, the wood will do its thing regardless of what you think you can do to hold it in place. If it wants to move, it's going to move. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.